Let's walk you through some of the key findings for the poll that was put together by Imani Africa. They call it the Imani Pulse. So positive sentiment strength. Now, if you look at this, in the month of August, according to the polls, the NDC generally had about 28.6% of positive comments or positive mentions on social media. And with social media, I'm referring to Twitter, some call it X, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and also online stories that have been published about the political parties and the flag bearers. So 20, in August, 28.6% said very positive things about the NDC. In September and October, 29.8% had positive mentions for the NDC. And these uh, are, so clearly there was an increase in terms of what people are saying regarding John Dramani Mahama's NDC. Now about the individual and his campaign. So John Mahama had 72% of positive comments attributed to him on all these social media platforms based on sometimes his campaign promises, his responses to the current administration, and some key actions he has taken. For instance, when he joined Lodina Mahama to open a foundation somewhere in the um, uh, northern part of the country or so, people thought that that was a good initiative to at least be present to launch such an initiative drew him some interesting and positive comments. Generally, uh, the negative comments ag against um, John Dramani Mahama hover around 28%. So all the total comments that have been made for or against John Mahama, 28% of that is negative. Now to his specific promises. Again, we know that political parties go around promising the electorate what they want to do when they are given the nod. 70% have responded positively to John Ramani Mahama's uh, promises. I will tell you what some of the key promises the NDC have been making. Then we have 30% disagreeing or saying that his promises are high for looting and they clearly do not agree with him. So 30% said negative things about him. Now, these are the issues that have drawn some positive attention to John Mahama on social media. First, he met with the clergy about a month ago, and during that meeting, some uh, prophecies were made indicating that John Ramani Mahama was likely to be the next president of the republic. If those who believe in Christianity and believe in the prophecies, then clearly they can go to bed saying that God has declared John Dramani Mahama as winner. So during that uh, meeting with the clergy, the prophetic declarations drew very positive sentiments and comments for John Mahama. His 24-hour economy economic promise has also gotten a lot of people talking on social media in positive terms for him. His engagement with young voters. You would recall that the NDC, the first party to actually detach their youth manifesto and launched it at an event drawing more youthful people to even present various aspects of the manifesto. That in itself and the fact that they have engaged the youth and he even went to the Buko Marina where he interacted with a lot of young people. That also drew quite a lot of positive comments for John Mahama. People said they thought that that was a good initiative. And Another thing that has given a tap on the back for John Mahama is the negative, I beg your pardon, the poor economic management of the current administration, the NPP, where people said that because of how bad the NPP have managed the economy, they think John Mahama is a better alternative, and so it drew quite some positive attention to him. What are the issues people uh, seem to have disagreed with John Mahama on? One is his, uh, ten, his past experience as president. People thought that he was, you know, the NPP, led by the uh, current president, Anna Kufado, said that he's the perennial flag bearer of the NDC. Why does he say so? Because he stood a few times. And they thought that his previous tenure as president was abysmal and thought that he didn't need to even be given the nod by the NDC to lead them into the elections. So most MPP people and a few people who are in between undecided thought that his previous administration was bad enough for him to want to come again. That is why they are saying negative things about him. Also, this particular controversial issue of the presidential debate, he decided not to debate um, Dr. Baumia has also drawn some negative criticism for John Dramani Mahama. Let's go to the camp of the NPP. What is the uh, number looking like for John Drama, I beg your pardon, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya and the NPP. So the political party as a whole, the NPP, have had about 29.8% of positive comments being said about them. And in this case, that was in the month of July. 
in the month of September and October, when another survey was done, all the total number of comments on about 20% of people who spoke on social media, when all those numbers were gathered, it turns out that 31.24% in the month of September, October, said very positive things about the NPP as a political party. That's also an increase from 29.8 to 31.2. Then general attributes and comments about the flag bearer of the NPP, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, people say that he seems to be walking the right path. So 78, and that's quite sizable comparatively, 78% say that, and above actually, say that it looks as though uh, Dr. Baumia exudes a certain characteristic that they believe is um, good for the presidential candidate and also for the political party going into the elections. Uh, about the vision, the vision of Dr. Baumia, and I mean, if you're within the political space and the current administration, you know he is called Dr. Digitization. Everything ICT technology has been attributed to him under this current administration, something he intends to pursue even further. And so generally, his vision and some of the key promises he's made has drawn 30, 82, I should say, 82% of the comments going in his favor, very positive comments made about Dr. Baumia's vision. Negative sentiments and comments shared about Dr. Baumia over around 18%. Now, the endorsements and polls, 35% believe that uh, they trust in the ideals of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. 65% have also shared very negative comments about him, totally disagreeing with him, saying they do not believe in uh, his policies. And these ones are people who have come out to endorse him and institutions who are also tracking this endorsement. So what are the issues? Let's look at the specific issues that are drawing Dr. Baumia into the positive light. One is the current government's initiative, the Citizens App, which was launched a few weeks ago. The Citizens App, it was, it was launched by himself, again, Dr. Digitization. So that is one attribute that has gone in his favor. There's also a smart bus government intends to roll out in numbers. There's one that is currently on a pilot basis, the smart bus where you probably can just tap and sit, etc. It's bringing him some positive attributes. Party supporters, a sizable number of NPP supporters, it looks like they have no option than to support Dr. Baumia. We'll bring you other polls in subsequent programs where they show that there is a size of NPP people who voted for Nanado Dankwe Kufuado in previous elections, deciding not to vote for Dr. Baumia. They want to vote for NDC. We'll tell you that in subsequent polls. But as it stands now, a sizable number of MPP supporters are, are throwing their weight behind Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. His frequent tours across the country. Currently, he is in the Volta region, and it looks as though the tours he's making from the, you know, crisscrossing the country campaigning is also drawing some negative attention, I beg your pardon, some positive attention to him, which is putting him in good light. Religious and regional factors have also gone in his favor. The things that are drawing Dr. Baumia into the negative light include the economic concerns. Many have attributed the current struggle, especially because he is vice president and per the constitution, the vice president is the head of the economic management team. He, uh, as a leader of the team, many have, a, have a posited that has performed quite abysmally. So economic concerns say that Dr. Baumia is a no-no protests, public outcry, campaign against illegal mining, like we indicated, is showing strongly. So people believe that the current government, and by extension Dr. Baumia, have not done well when it comes to managing the economy and the current fight, which is against illegal mining. And so most of the negative comments have been uh, attributed to him. And then the multiple reference to corruption. Now you know that all governments since time immemorial have had some negativity when it comes to corruption. But for Dr. Bamia, one of the key issues that are drawing him into a lot of negative commentary is the fact that the government has also not done too well in fighting corruption.